Grizzlies in Game 6 here are looking to close out the the upstart Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, they are that rare NBA team with a losing record. Not only that, they're about nine games under 500, but you can't base their performance on that season record because they are a team that's playing more like a team that's 10 games over 500 in the playoffs than one that's not. Mm-hmm. But this game is really tough for all. I, I, you know, I mean, I would never encourage anybody to flip a coin. But the line is basically a coin flip. It's uh, Memphis minus one. The total is uh, now 229. It opened at 228. And, uh, you know, to sort things off, I, I do lean towards the Grizzlies because they are the number two seed. Number two seeds in game sixes do very well against the spread and straight up. Um, and even back in the day where it was a 2-3-2 format for these best of sevens, uh, the results were, were good even when uh, on the road which is mm-hmm. the case right now as well. But um, I'll turn it over to you and uh, to see if we can uh, dig out a couple nuggets here that are worthy of a best bet. Yeah, I too, I lean towards the Grizzlies here. I know th- this game specifically is a tough game to cap just because of the style of play that these guys um, uh, play with. They, they, they match up really well, and we've been saying that throughout the whole series, and that's why the, that's why the, a lot of these games have been so tight. Um, but, you know, from a side perspective, you know, Minnesota has – has covered every first quarter so far this season uh, in the series. Um, and uh, they've also gone over the total in the first quarter, every series in every game in the series. Um, so that, that was uh, one way that I was looking at this. I mean, like we mentioned the side perspective from a full game uh, look was, is really hard. So you got to really look for these little um, first quarter, second quarter, like niche type bets where you can kind of take advantage of the books. I mean, if you think about it in five games, uh, they've gone over the total. Uh, Minnesota has covered um, pretty easily, but the series is 3-2. The, 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 so you know the Bulls have been giving up uh, pretty large leads, especially like I think I forgot exactly what game it was, but it was I think it was either game three where they they let let go of two 20 point leads in one in one game and end up losing outright. Um, to me here, I think the line is small enough to where you would probably want to bet to who you think is going to win the game. And to me, that's the Grizzlies. And historically, it's been profitable to fade teams in the playoffs who had a double-digit lead in the previous game and ended up losing in our dogs the next game. And that's the situation here today that's telling us you know, to look towards the Grizzlies here. Um, and like I mentioned, even though the series is 3-2, the Wolves have covered each each first quarter in this series. Um, and I think it, it speaks to the depth and defense of the Grizzlies. Like we mentioned all series long, it, the longer these games go, the longer the series extends, the depth and defense of the teams uh, show up. And you can kind of see that in all the, the games that closed out yesterday. Um, you know, as far as the total, I, I, both teams pace wise are above their average uh, from the regular season, they're attempting more free free uh, field goals. They're also attempting more free throws per game. That's 16 combined free throws attempted per game more than in the regular season. But uh, the games have been going under. Majority of the games have been going under. Uh, what I've seen, what I've noticed is the total hit under 230 for the first time in this series. Um, th- the reason why I think that's a little significant is because both teams in the regular season have hit at a profitable percentage when the total is 230 or less. Grizzlies specifically 10 and 2 straight up, 9 and 3 against the spread, and 9 and 3 to the over as road faves when the total is 230 or less. Um, so to me, those those are pretty significant numbers here uh, as far as like pace wise and all that. Um, so those would be my leans here: uh, Grizzlies against the spread, a full game, and, and towards the over full game. But I, I think as far as placing an actual bet, I'm really looking at the first quarter numbers here. Uh, maybe the first quarter over. I know, like we, like I just said, like the the first quarter overs have hit every single game, but not every game has gone over. Um, so it's it just one way to think yeah. about it. it. Could be it could be that situation where you, I mean, you always bring this up almost every show, John. You know that live in game betting. You know pre flop and, and then full game. If you see a, a spot where you can take advantage of of the line or or the total, it might be a uh, might be time to go with a live bet there. Yeah, and that one, I don't have the notes in front of me, but you just triggered my memory. Uh, teams that scored 40 or more points in the first quarter of NBA playoff games, the total ends up going under at a very significant rate. I believe it's 60, mid-60s to upper 60% over the last 20 seasons, last 10 seasons. Nice. 
So that's a great point. So if you play the over in the first quarter and one of these teams scores 40, which is, I mean, that's better than a 50-50 proposition. I could see the Timberwolves getting 40 on the board, getting out to a really quick start. And then uh, you bet the under in game at, at probably, um, you know, whatever it is. It could be as high as 238 at that yeah. point. But that, that would be an exceptional value for sure. I do have a few notes uh, on this game with um, support of Memphis. And um, what we have is the I'm just gonna uh, the seven seeds. I have details on that. The seven seeds in the NBA playoffs are 48 and 146 straight up, 72 and 119 with three pushes against the number for just 38 percent winning bets. Betting against them has been profitable, and it certainly applies to this elimination game. So let's look at elimination game results. So when you're betting against the seven seed in an elimination situation. Uh, that has produced a, a big time 36 and 10 straight up record and a 31 and 15 against the spread record for 67% winning bets over the last 20 playoff seasons. And if that seven seed is a home dog, which you know it doesn't matter if it's a five point dog or a one point dog, um, which Minnesota currently is, uh, the the favorite has gone 42 and 17 straight up, 38, 19 and two. Against the number for, again, 67% winning bets over the last 20 playoff seasons. And lastly, Memphis is 20 and 10 with one push in the second half of the season, facing a strong passing team like Minnesota that's averaging 23 or more assists per game. So I definitely um, lean in Memphis and now probably just a little bit more than I was before I listened to you and read it off. <laughs> but um, it, it's hard to, you know. Minnesota is a very exciting team, very youthful, very athletic, very fun to watch. But you're to take them, you're going up against the two seed. And Memphis had the second best record in all of the association this year. And that's what prevents me from getting enamored with the idea of uh, a monumental upset occurring in the series. Uh, because the uh, game seven, if necessary, is going to be on Sunday. So, uh, that's our take on that. 